So Anthony, so we had you on like around two and then at three, you got word from the DTC or Apex that we're good to go again? It was a little earlier than that. We shut trading down in those names from 11 a.m. Eastern, and then we opened it back up just before 2. So and, we were down a little less than two hours. And I may have missed this. Did they tell you why, if it's going to happen again, if it's going to be shut down again? Did you get any clarity on that at this point? So, I mean, I have some information, and again, I want to disclose that I wasn't involved in those conversations. These conversations happened between my clearing firm's management, the regulators, and DTC. Okay, so just how the story was disseminated to me was when I got the phone call from my clearing firm that we were good to go and we can open up those shares for trading again, the information was that there was multiple ways that this happened. Number one was that there was a large amount of financing that my clearing firm was able to get a hold of to be able to pay for the increased cost of collateral to clear those specific volatile names. Number two, there was a negotiation. I was not involved in negotiation, but there was a negotiation down of those collateral rates from a ridiculous amount near 100%, where basically the clearing firm was fronting every single dollar traded on the buy side in those names from, I don't know, something I guess that the clearing firm felt they could afford to pay. Got it. So the negotiation would be with the DTC on that side of things. Three-way. DTC, regulatory body involved, and the clearing firm. So the SEC would be the regulatory body. Right. The DTC, SEC, and the, clear, and the clearing firm. I don't think we would ever thought we'd be... A lot, a lot of what? Yeah. Active I don't think we'd ever... Yeah, I don't think we'd ever... I don't think we'd ever thought we'd be here in 2021. Quite interesting no. times, right? Indeed. I mean, if you look at the beginning of this story, how it culminated, and now what's going to happen? I just watched Elizabeth Warren on TV talking about how the SEC is going to be making, you know, changes immediately. I mean, this is amazing. This is what we wanted, right? The idea is that we want the SEC to go in and, and start regulating the institutional money, the hedge funds, the ones that are getting 10x leverage, the ones that are being able to short a stock, being able to short more stock than there is float for the company, right? That's what should be regulated, not spending all their time on worrying about customer PDT rules that we have to deal with on a daily basis. And we have to explain to our customers why they're not allowed to trade more than three times a day in some with $25,000 can. Uh, you know, it just makes no, no sense. To me. Yeah, so the PDT rules in the chat, they're going nuts. They hate the PDT rules. They say it hurts yeah. the, the poor man because they can't sell if they, have, they don't have 25000 in an account. I mean, you think that's archaic, the PDT rules? I mean, this is little known, but we're actually, Weevil is part of a consortium of brokerages that are lobbying with the SEC along with Staney, the Security Traders Association of New York, to lobby out and get rid of the PDT rule, right? The PDT rule was created during the dot-com bubble in the 90s when you saw a huge influx of new retail investors that never existed before, right? The advent of E-Trade and Scott Trade and DLJ Direct and all the new web platforms. Uh, so you had a whole new investor range, very typical of what you're seeing now. And people were losing a lot of money because they didn't have the information that the institutions had, right? And now you fast forward 20 some odd years later and look at the information that's available to a retail trader now versus what's available to a retail trader 20 years ago. It's complete night and day, a completely different situation. Retail investors now are smarter, savvier, more educated, have access to more tools, have access to speedier ex and better execution, and obviously have access to chat rooms and discords and like this program, right? They can exchange information like they're sitting on an actual trading desk. You know, yeah, this, it's, a complete, it's a completely different environment. Absolutely. And the, the chat is like, I'm opening an account with Weeble now. I mean, a absolutely. When people, like these are things that are archaic and need to be changed, and they need to hear from guys like you saying this stuff. I mean, that's that's where it comes down to. And so, I mean, do you think this could happen again, where they could close these things down again? In terms of the individual stocks? Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but absolutely. You know, if we see a, another situation where you know DTC feels like the stability of the market could be at risk they are going to increase those levels again and it's going to be you know possible another shutdown that decision is unfortunately out of my hands all i can do is just kind of let you guys know and be transparent on why it's happening but i wouldn't rule it out got it so that's where it's at now when you had those three hours or two hours where those stocks were closed where your customer service lines is blowing up like people calling in to see what's going on because it's just an unusual you know circumstance i think that that's putting it lightly what's blowing up yeah, it was a very big influx and it wasn't just us. It was across every every brokerage platform on the street. People are angry and, you know, 
for obvious reasons. I mean, we were angry, right? As brokers, we want to be able to provide customers with a platform where they could trade whatever the heck they want to trade. Our hands were tied and trying to exp explain that is, you know, is difficult. And I apologize that the wait times were longer than normal. I know they have been long all week, but it's uh, unfortunately, you know, growth outpaces scaling and we are scaling and we are working on getting that down. Yeah, I mean that, and you said, I think you said uh, Mitchell um, earlier that you're like at over a thousand percent more with, with accounts, account openings right now. Yeah, and then and this, these are, you know, and a lot of these accounts are customers that have never had a brokerage account before, right? And they're seeing something, a landscape changing event that's going on today and they want to be involved, right? They want to be part of the solution and then they're coming and they're opening brokerage accounts saying, I want to be part of this. And uh, it's unique. I've never experienced this before. 22 years I've been in this business and we're, you know, we're taking it day by day and we're going to be as transparent and as upfront with our customers as we possibly can be in real time. That's why I, I pinged you and said, hey, do you want, do you want a couple minutes so I can at least tell you guys what's up? No, absolutely. And, and one last thing. So basically the DTC, SEC, and you know, the Apex is the world or whoever, what's that rip? What's that thing that, that was so costly? The borrower? What, what is that called? Is there a name for it? Yeah, the, co the collateral cost on the buys. There's no collateral needed when you're selling a stock. There's collateral needed when you buy the stock. So that's, and that's what happened. So no, and people are, are saying here, I, I love Weebo of this. And that's why I always say like to people seek to understand before, and I get it. If I own these stocks, I'm upset because I want, but I wanted to sell them. And, I, and yes, you could have sold, but if you wanted to buy, I mean, there's, I get it. I get with the, the anger and where it comes from because you never think your money's locked up, right? We're watching what's going on on media. I, I try my best to not look at comments because I'll just get really upset. But we see what's going on, and yeah, I mean, we have to keep it open for sale because if someone is losing their life savings, they need to have the opportunity to at least get out of the name, right? And it's yeah. just because we have it open for sale doesn't mean you actually have to hit the sell button. And I saw a lot of hold the line posts going up, which I'm sure that's where that's coming from. But again, we have our hands tied at the broker's level. Yeah, and knock on wood, you guys have been pretty stable and not going down mm -hmm. with the amount of activity you've had. I mean, just for us, I mean, we had 3 million people on our site yesterday. We average normally like 600,000 and 3 million people and our our servers and everything was a mess, but somehow the, develop, the technologists at our company handled it and your company. So we thank you coming on. If you have any more updates, let us know because you were the, you let us know on the earlier thing. And I don't know if you saw our Twitter, but I think that thing has like 25,000 retweets right now. You know, when we, when you guys open for trading, I think, I mean, maybe like something like that. So. And you know how they're talking about tech things. They want level two ladders in the app, right? So I know you have a lot of that's options. Okay. That's good. We're, we're progressing. I know. I know you have a lot of new option stuff you're putting. You guys, we'll do. Yeah. This is what we'll do in the, a week or two, or call a few weeks. We'll have Anthony back on for a live show. You guys can go in the app and we'll ask questions just about the app. But today is a different day, and we appreciate your transparency, your accuracy, and getting the story out there. <laughs> Yeah.